Okay, everyone, welcome. It's Chris. Thanks for coming by. We're just starting out the video with the finished painting. So here you can see our, our finished painting. I'm going to zoom in just a touch here. Okay, so if you want, you can hit pause, work right from this picture here. Uh, you can do a screen capture. You could take a picture of your uh, monitor, your uh, computer monitor, or your uh, laptop computer, or your iPad with your phone. Lots of ways to do this. You can do a screen capture. Um, most of you are really good with electronic equipment, with your phones and so forth, and computers, so you'll figure it out. This is the painting, and you can work right from this. Uh, you can draw and paint from this, all in this one uh, first section here. And then right after this, we'll just get started. Okay, everyone, welcome. Hey, come right on in and let's uh, get started here. We're going to do some really exciting painting today. We're actually going to work on a, um, I would call it a uh, painting similar to uh, Andrew Wyeth's paintings. Uh, if you ever look up online and do a re, uh, little bit of uh, uh, research and uh, check out some of uh, Andrew Wyeth's paintings, he's a, a great master painter, um, just phenomenal work. Uh, so I don't want to get too much into all the details of, of uh, his, historical things like that. I want to get right into the painting. That's what we're here for. We're here to get better, practice our skills, have a good time, enjoy. Let's do that. So uh, one of his paintings, uh, he has a window inside of a room, and he actually does a lot of paintings of interiors. Uh, that's one of his favorite things to paint. And uh, I think he painted many of his interiors of his own places that he lived, as well as friends and neighbors and things like that. So he had a lot of... Um, work that he did around his own environment where he lived and worked as an artist, professional artist. And so we're going to try to have fun with this. This is a, a great painting for anyone. It could, you could be a beginner just starting out in watercolor. You might be, uh, you know, a couple years into it and you're having fun and enjoying uh, learning watercolor. Um, but this is, this is what we're going to use. We're going to use this, uh, just an idea of a window inside of a room. So we have uh, the beautiful uh, outdoors outside of that window, the bright light, and then the indoors, the, the walls and the shadowing and the nice uh, look of that feel of light and uh, dark. So that's always a powerful, impactful thing you can do in a painting when you're creating a watercolor painting. If you can capture the, 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 the uh, interesting effects of light, you're always going to have more of a, a better outcome, I think, with your watercolor painting. So we're going to try to work on that right now. So let's get started. I'm just going to take you uh, through a few things I'm going to do here. One will be uh, I'm going to work from my laptop, which is across from me. This is my uh, iPhone. So I do have an iPhone here, and I looked up the picture. So you can do that. You can go online, use your laptop, your home computer, your iPhone, it's Samsung, whatever type of uh, phone you might have. You can look up Andrew Wyeth, and you'll find the painting that you just saw there. It's one of his most famous paintings. Um, I sort of am just zoning in on the window aspect and the walls and window aspect of the painting. I feel that's a good way to sort of work on something where we can have a fun time and we don't have to stress too much about too much information. So we will um, continue here. What I'll do is I'll uh, just do a quick... Um, a quick few things here while we're doing some setup here. So um, I don't normally use uh, sepia paint a whole lot, but we're going to use it in this painting. So what I'll do is I'll just, instead of um, emptying out a pan inside of my palette, I'll just take an additional pan. This is by Schminke. Schminke makes uh, half pans and whole pans, large pans like this. They make these, you can buy these online by Schminke. Uh, they make these palettes as well. These are This is a great palette. I think this is the best palette I've found uh, for um, just all-around painting for watercolor artists, whether you're outdoor painter, you paint indoors a lot. This gives you lots of palette space as well as lots of place to put your, um, your pans. 
So, and I have videos on this. You can look me up online on uh, watercolor in five. If you type in watercolor in five, I kind of show you how I set up my palette on all my colors. Um, so let's take this pan and we'll put some sepia tone in there. Um, I like uh, Windsor and Newton paints mostly. That's what I use 75% of the time. I'm always using Windsor and Newton paints. Windsor and Newton paints. I find that they're just beautiful. They're uh, all around. I just find that they really look great and they handle great in the palette and on the paper. So I'm just going to fill up my well here with some sepia tone paint, Windsor and Newton. And then what I'll do is I'll just double stick tape. Um, the uh, pan to my palette. <clears throat> so I'll just take a piece of small. This is uh, outdoor heavy duty uh, double stick tape. And I just take a little, little trim a little small piece off there like that. With my scissor. And then I just peel off the red tape there. Like that, and then I just, I probably can flip this over, I think, but I'm not going to do that so I don't dump anything on my paper. Then I'll just, so I just put the double stick tape on the bottom of my pan here of uh, sepia tone paint by Windsor Newton, and we'll just, let's say, uh, let's put it here. Actually, I use this a lot up here. Let me let me do this over here. Okay, so I'll put that by my dark. Uh, that would be ivory black and uh, pines gray. And okay, so that's going to be uh, our sepia tone, which I don't normally have in my palette. It's pretty close to burnt umber. It's darker though, so you could use. French ultramarine blue and burnt umber mixed with maybe even a little bit of the Prussian blue to get a nice dark uh, or a darker um, burnt umber type uh, color. But we'll use the sepia tone for this painting for our uh, darkest uh, warm brownish color. And uh, you can make do though. If you don't have uh, sepia paint, no problem. You can use again burnt umber with a little bit of uh, Mm, yeah, I think a little bit of burnt umber and French ultramarine blue will work. It'll darken up your brown just a little bit. And you can also add um, some burnt sienna to that, which would balance the uh, light, uh, warm and coolness of the burnt umber. And you can be creative and, you know, change around the colors eventually if you try it in this fashion first and then you can go and maybe do a different uh, color scheme in this painting. You can do a lot with this type of painting. You can change things around. You can actually take the window, maybe make the window white trim. Uh, you can do all kinds of fun things. This is really, but we're going to work again from that photo. And I'm going to get situated here. I'm going to use some more uh, here. We're going to tape off our borders of our paper. The main thing here is you have to use rough paper. So make sure you have rough paper when you're doing this composition. That's that's the really a key uh, part of it. Uh, if you use rough paper, uh, you're going to have a, a, a real fun time with the textures and uh, all of the washes in your painting, this painting. Uh, if you don't use rough paper, I'm not, I don't think it's going to turn out that well because a big part of this uh, painting is the rough textures and getting some of the really nice uh, textural qualities of the walls and um, in the washes and just overall. So I'm just putting out the uh, tape onto the border of my paper. This is kind of good too, so you can see my border of my paper here. And I'm 
I'm using a uh, 14 inch arches pad, gummed pad. So what I did is I took a piece of printer paper and I put it on the bottom half of the paper for this video and then taped it so that I don't splash on my other half of my gummed pad paper. So this is actually half of a pad here, this, this rectangle is half my pad. And then I just cover the other half with my printer paper with a piece of tape so I don't splash anything on uh, down here. Okay, so we have everything all set up. We have our border. Okay. Let's uh, start our drawing. And basically, I think this is just a, a window framed out with some timbers, some trim. So this is nothing too complex. You can use a ruler. Let's use a ruler. I have a half a ruler here. And let's make the window about, so just for, it's always good to maybe um, lay out our, I'm looking at my reference material and I'm saying, okay, my window starts about here. And then it's about, so it's a good, it's a good amount across the page here about there and then if I go over here the window comes down about three quarters of the way maybe two thirds of the way so if we go one third two thirds so the window starts here and then we just know this is one third two thirds three-thirds window here so our window is going to be up here and then we'll do a couple more uh, details just to kind of give us the feel of a room maybe we'll do um, just maybe a little bit of uh, the bed posts so we'll get into our drawing though so at least we get the window make sure we, we want to make sure we get that window in here correctly it's proper scale window. This is really important, the scale of the window inside the room and the wall that we're painting. And if you want you can adjust it, you can shrink down the window, make it smaller in the room and add more information around. But if we're just going to stick with this and we'll do it this way. So now we're going to so we're going to take the and we're going to use a ruler. Let's use a ruler. Why not? So let's take a ruler, we're going to make a window. We said we're going to come down two-thirds, about here, like that. Good, so we lined up with the bottom of that. And we will uh, do this here, like so, and then we'll... Okay, now when I'm looking at my composition, I'm noticing that this looks pretty big, a little bigger than I'm anticipating. That's not a problem though. What I'll do is I'll make the trim of the window the out outer portion of this square, which will kind of shrink down the, the idea of everything. So um, I can see right away that we're going to have trim all the way around. Let's get the trim here. And we maybe make the trim across like so, and like this. And then there's a uh, sill on the interior of the window, so we'll make the sill. That'll hang over the edge of the outer trim, vertical trims. So we have the ver vertical trim this way. We're going to make the um, window sill trim a little bit beyond the, uh, like that, beyond the edge of the 
vertical trim. So that'll be a little interesting detail, this little tiny bit sticking out. That's important to have some variation here. Um, and then we have this here underneath. So we've got this good underneath this trim. Um, this is going to be dark shade, so we don't have to worry. Um, then we're going to go with um, this side of the... Basically, we're drawing a box within a box, if you can imagine, right? That's pretty simple, isn't it? We're just If you... You could always draw this in later, too, this sill. You could draw this sill line in after you do your larger box on the outside, and then you just draw another box for the trim on the outside of the window, on the inside of this, and you can kind of see the scale of it. So, and you're, and you're looking at your photograph, you're always referring back to your photograph. So we're going to take a break. We're going to take a break soon. We're just going to, let's get the window in. Let's get the window done first, and then we'll take a break. All right, so now, the only thing that's a touch complicated about this is um, the view is from someone maybe like sitting down on the bed and looking up. So the window is actually, you're seeing the, uh, in, you're seeing the actual inside of the window jam and the window, uh, jams on the interiors of the window. So, and that really looks beautiful. Uh, so you have thick jams. And then as well as thick jams, you have, well, let's say our jams are a little thinner, a little thinner than the other at trim over here. So let's just see what that looks like. Okay, like that. So they're a little thinner, the jams over here. And this, this jam is a little thinner over here for the, um, like that. And then here you have the top interior jam of the window, like that. This is all just about taking your time and just really studying the window in this picture because actually this painting the main focus is the window uh, uh, and you'll notice that it's it's pretty detailed so if you just take your time keep looking at the window in the picture and try to maybe even rough out a sketch on some uh, printer paper first or some scrap paper on the side kind of figure out you know figure out some of the details of that window first sketch it a couple times first maybe use a ruler a few times come up with uh, a game plan so that when you're going to start on your really good watercolor paper, your rough watercolor paper here, you kind of have things worked out first. I can't say that enough, and those of you that follow me, and I'll just put a little shameless plug in here. If you haven't subscribed, hey, please subscribe. This is what it's all about, learning all the details of watercolor. So if you come by, you subscribe to my channel, you hit the notification bell, you're going to be uh, learning the best knowledge you can in watercolor. And uh, we do paintings here every week, every type of painting you can imagine, seascapes, landscapes, flower paintings. We do paintings like this, offbeat paintings, doing some famous old master paintings. Uh, we do paintings about palette colors and palettes. We do all kinds of stuff here, interesting watercolor videos. So come on by, hit that notification bell, hit the subscribe button. You won't be disappointed and you'll be excited each time you come here. To my channel. So let's continue on here. Now back to our programming. Uh, let's do the, we so, so far we have the exterior trim on the wall that's actually tacked on the wall of this wall of this bedroom. Now we're doing the interior jams, which are the three-dimensionally, if you're looking at the window, this is the wall, the, the actual wall of the house. Here. So you're seeing the exterior trim, then you're seeing the jam where the window sits in, and then now we'll do the window itself, the sashes of the window. Um, so we're going to create this like we see it in the, in the painting. 
So we have three. We have three lights, as they say, by three lights. Let's use our ruler. And let's just go across there like that. And like that. And then this is a little thicker. It looks like this sash is a little thicker here. And then we're going to go three across this way. One, two, three. Let's space it evenly. So if you can imagine, I'm just going to try to feel out the three lights of the grill of the window, which is about a third. One third, one third, one third. You can just imagine the like that. And we do that, and we just draw vertical lines, two vertical lines. And wow, we need a break now. This is a lot of stuff to have to do, to have to worry about and work out here. Um, we're going to have another, the sill, the window sill is here. Now, you, you might be saying to yourself, well, this is way too much detail, but trust me, it's not. Carefully study what I'm drawing and, and study the picture, too. The actual finished painting by Wyeth. Try to get this window really, uh, really nailed down nicely. Really try to get all the details of it because that's the focus of the painting. And wait till we start doing some of the trees outside this window and the other part of the house. So there's, a, when you're looking through this window, you're seeing a portion of the exterior of the house. Really exciting. So that's really, really cool. It almost takes you from the bedroom out into the outside uh, world through this window. So that's what's so exciting about this painting. So that's why I try to really kind of get the, get the window and all the trim as best as you can. It doesn't have to be perfect, but try to get it pretty good. Um, and you can see here so far how I did this. It's all pretty much here. You can kind of see everything. Looks pretty good. And we have the... And we're going to work on this just a little more, but we need a break now. We've been working on this for like 20 minutes. All right, so let's take a break, stretch our legs, uh, get up, walk, get a glass of water, cup of tea, whatever. I'm going to get a cup of coffee right now. I already have it right next to me here, so I'm ready to go. Uh, let's take a break. I'll be right back. We'll continue finishing up this window. We're almost done, and then we can start painting. Okay, it's Chris Petri, and we're back, everyone. Thanks so much for um, working on this painting together. We're going to have a, a fun time. We're going to continue. Um, so we're working on this beautiful Andrew Wyeth style painting. It's an interior painting. And I'm hoping that I can get you, the viewer, who might be new to watercolor, to do this painting and not get bogged down in too many details and then get frustrated and just you know say, I, I can't draw this window. It's too much. That's why I'm just going to show a quick uh, way to do this window in this interior without getting too bogged down. You can see here I did a lot of details on this window so far. But if you want to just do a simple rendition of this window, you can really actually do that. So in essence, if you're new to watercolor and you don't draw all the time and you're not used to all the, you know, hash marks and all this kind of stuff, no big deal. When you draw the window in the this interior space, I would just do a quick, you know, it's more or less, uh, it's, a, it's a rectangle. It's not a square, it's a rectangle as far as its shape, like that. So all you have to really do is just remember, um, you're going to do a rectangle within a rectangle, which represents the trim. So that's all you have to remember is to do that rectangle and then another rectangle within a rectangle, like this. That's all you have to do there. And then, oh, and then beyond that, all you have to just remember is you're going to have the uh, grills in the window are one-thirds. So one-third, 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 one-third. So you just take your, uh, you could measure it. If you have a ruler, you know, you can use millimeters, centimeters, uh, inches, you know, you can use the uh, American uh, standard, you can use the metric standard, however you want, and you just divide it up into thirds. So you might even just make it easy when you draw your first rectangle, you make it like six centimeters or 
um, you could make it, let's say, well, if you, it's probably easier to do it in metric if you're trying to divide things up and make like uh, subdivisions of things. So, but to make a long story short, however you have to do it, you just get your rectangle, rectangle within a rectangle, and then you just want to make your th thirds like this for your, for your lights in your windows, like that. And this one here is a little bit larger, according to the picture. So this one will be a little bit larger. And that's all. And then you would just follow the same way we're going to, once we start painting, you're going to follow our painting techniques as you go through the painting. Except if you don't want to get bogged down with all the window sills and angles on the interior of the window, so on and so forth. Just keep it real simple. Just keep it a rectangle. I'll even kind of make it more simple here. A rectangle. Then another rectangle within that rectangle. And that gives you your trim around your window. And then you have your grills in your window. Your actual glazing. Your window glazings. And this one's a little thicker here. Like that. Once you have this drawn in in pencil, you're, you're set. That's all you need to have. If you want to go the detailed route, well, we have it here. Let's continue on. So we will uh, continue with our drawing. So now we have the window uh, completed. There's something on top of this window, so let's draw that in. That looks like maybe a uh, small cup or something like that. We'll put that there. We have some shadows from this sash, so let's do that. We'll add that shadow there. And Actually, I also have to draw in the window trim here, actually. So, if you can imagine, there's actually another um, again, there's another there's actually three rectangles within each other. There's the room interior trim. There's the actual um, jam of the window in here. And then there's the window frame, which I'm going to do now. So, um, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to fill in all the minor details I see. This is the window sashes. There's the window sashes here, along the bottom. And then I'll, I will make the... And as you can see, I'm just working The lines, I want to make them the same thickness as I see in the picture, in the painting, so that when I go to paint it, it's going to come out correctly. And this is all, this is dark, dark here. This is a little lighter. This is dark, dark here. We'll work that out as we go. The tonal values, the lights and darks of everything, we work that out as we paint. But we get down the, the critical information uh, for our drawing. This is a little thicker, I noticed. So I'm going to make that a little thicker. And that's all darks there. And then we have.
That's plenty of information, I think. Too many pencil lines will get us in trouble. Let's not do that. Let's not do too many pencil lines. Uh, and I think we're... There we go. All right, perfect. All right, so now we're continuing on. Uh, we will... Next, we will get the uh, trim along the bottom of the wall. Um, let's see, let's do the, let's maybe, let's do the corner of the wall first here. So there's a, a corner of the room here. There's a wall in the corner of the room. So let's do that, like that. And then we can erase a little here, just a little bit with our kneaded eraser. So we'll erase that line a little bit. Now we're going to look and say, where is the um, post of the bed compared to the window? So if I take the window and make a level line across, let's see in the picture, it's just a little touch above the window sill. So that's going to be the, here's going to be the, so we're just going to make the top of the, bed post here and we're not going to get overly worried we're just going to contour draw we have a series of uh, circles here circle circle then we have a, <clears throat> a kind of a bell shape there like that and then we have a thicker portion of that and look like this and then we have the we have the um, pillows on the bed and the bedspread and covering so we're gonna make a nice bedspread we'll make this comfortable looking this is as if we're relaxing maybe we're in bed reading a book enjoying ourselves on a nice day inside and we're enjoying a look out the beautiful window we're seeing the outdoors and um, I think I'm gonna leave the um, I'm trying to think if that's gonna work out with our scale here okay I think the bedpost on this side would be further to the left outside our picture judging from this so I think I think we'll be okay we can leave the one bedpost here and that'll be fine. And then we'll put our uh, chair rail on the um, wall here. So let's do that. And that's simply just a, a couple lines, three lines. Like that. So we have a chair rail running across the room. Over here, it's going to angle back this way. Like that. And I think that's good. I think our drawing is complete. We're, we have everything, all the information we need. We have the window. Lots of detail on this window. Remember, if you want to simplify it, just get down the basics of it. The outside trim and then the uh, lights of the uh, window panes themselves. Uh, keep it simple. You know, if you, if you like the real details of things, well, then you go in and do all the details. If you want to keep it more simple, then just simplify it. Don't worry about all the lines and, and uh, uh, real, uh, you know, detailed part of the window that we did here. It's, it's fine if you do a, a more simple version of it. And again, we have the walls, a simple um, a bed post here, a bed, some like bedspread. You know, we're going to have a nice little look in here of a nice comfortable room. 
And then we're going to have all the outdoor things too. We'll also get that going. Let's let's uh, let's take a break. Again, we did a lot finishing up our window. Uh, let's take another break. We'll come back. We'll get some of the outdoor trees and some of the side of the house over here. So the outdoor view is very important to this painting. So we're going to make sure we get the details of that. So let's take another break, a quick break, and uh, we'll come back. We'll start working on the outdoor, what lies beyond these win this window uh, view here, which is really exciting. You're really going to like this next part. We're going to um, create some of these pine trees and the sides of the house and the sunlight coming through the window. It's going to be beautiful. All right, let's, we'll be right back. All right, we're getting back. We're going to finish up our drawing. Just a touch more um, details here in this window section. Uh, let me see if I can turn down my lights just a little bit. Okay, sometimes those lights I have above me, I, I try to turn them down sometimes because I think it's hard hard to see the uh, pencil lines. Hopefully we can see the pencil lines here, but we have our window boxed out really nicely. Um, and now we're just going to do the uh, out, outdoors. Outside of the window here we have a beautiful uh, pine tree. So let's take a look here. Let's do our pine tree. We're just going to kind of rough it in a little bit. Most of this work we'll do with our paintbrush. We'll do most of this again with our paintbrush, but we're just going to kind of rough in the... And what's fun about this is you, we'll have a lot of fun creating the, the pine trees out, outside of this window scene here. Um, it's lots of details and um, nothing too uh, difficult, you know, pine tree, you're just doing lots of little small fine lines um, here along this window. The window is sort of hiding the uh, pine tree a little bit, so you're not having to do as much uh, worrying about how it's going to turn out because you just, if you get a few lines here and there correct, you're, you're going to turn out fine. And then up here we have another uh, bit of uh, pine tree here, some limbs. This is a limb from the pine tree there. And another there, just a little bit there. And this one here I think is a little more, I'm going to just zip that little eraser. I think this, this, this is more level, this, this bit here. Just a little touch there, we could even erase that a little bit, just maybe a little bit of a branch there, not too much. Okay, and then we have uh, the house. Okay, so the exterior of this home, when you look through this window, you're seeing another wall of the house on the exterior point here. So we're just going to do that wall. And there's some old clapboard siding here on this wall. So we're just going to make the siding clapboards here and we angle the clapboards this way and then as they come down we level them out so by the time we're down here we're straight level and there might be some more uh, a little bit of uh, more uh, maybe some shrubs over here on the left hand side a little bit we could do that and again, the, the real key exciting part of the painting is the window and the view looking out into the uh, outdoors from this scene. So this is really the critical, real exciting part of the painting, this window area. So that's why the window, we we spent a lot of time on the window and the uh, outdoor here we have the, again we have the, um, the other part of the house here, 
the exterior of that portion of the house there. And some pine trees and that's good, I think. We'll pretty much have that all set. And all we have left now uh, is really, I think we're actually all set. We can, we can, uh, we can work from our painting. When we start painting this scene in watercolor, we're just going to use our reference photo. And the best thing um, is to use my finished painting as your reference painting. That would be the best thing to do. Because if you're going to draw and paint from this, it just makes it more simple. Or you can actually go back to the original uh, photograph online of the Andrew Wyeth painting. Uh, you can do that as well. Both work uh, fine. So um, we'll get started. We'll maybe do some painting now. I'm going to use a, a number five uh, Da Vinci travel brush. Fresh clean water. And I think we, we can do a lot with this number five brush in this painting because the painting is, you know, like a six by eight size painting on rough, or Arches rough paper. So we can do a lot of the painting with our um, number five brush here. And we have um, sepia tone paint. We can use that. So we're going to have that here our sepia tone paint. And we have some other colors mixing and mingling up here. We have some... Let's start off fresh. So I don't want to really use too much of what I have prior. Let me just let me just clean up the palette a little bit. So I'm going to just clean up the powder touch. I'll just... I'll start from scratch. I'll just take all the paint off previous here. Okay. And now we're going to go in. We have sepia tone, burnt umber, French Ultramarine Blue. I usually have a tissue with me. I dry off some of the water on the uh, tissue. And then we'll just start out. We're gonna, let's go for the darks first. So let's go straight in. What do we see? What are our darkest darks? Um, on the window, uh, I think up here is pretty dark. So we can do this. This is the actual window frame. The sash of the window, actually. Let's do the sash of the window, the darkest dark. So that's straight, straight sepia tone. And if you start with the darkest darks, you can't go wrong. You do those first, and then you lighten up as you go. That's all, really. So now this is dark over here. You'll see this sash of the window over here is dark. So let's do that. I just rest my hand on the paper, so I'm stable. I have a stable, firm uh, resting place for my uh, hand. And then I just take my brush and set it down, and then just go and slightly move my hand upwards, like that. And let's uh, see, we have, uh, so I used burnt umber and sepia tone. To, uh, 
start working in my darkest darks. Here I just set the brush down and then just slide the brush over a little bit at a time. Like that. There we go. And uh, we could also use some raw umber there, some we have also some uh, yellow ochre. So you kind of see I'm sticking with really the earth tones, the earth tones here. And let's add some cerulean blue in there just for some warm and cool. We always want to have warm and cool. And we just put some window grills in or window panes. These are the glazings of the window. Uh, there we go, like that. If you see something a little darker, go straight into your sepia tone. Just make it darker. Even within these darks, you have darker darks. Sometimes you'll notice. If you look real closely into the photographs of these paintings, you'll notice there's little, even when you're painting really dark, you'll notice sometimes even really dark passages within the painting will have even darker darks in there, which are straight, straight right out of the tube paint. And uh, we're going to keep going here. This might be, if you find that you have a section of your painting where you look and you say, I think I drew something incorrectly, uh, no problem. You can just lift up your pencil pencil line. I noticed I made this portion of the window incorrectly, or I might have penciled in something else which made that line seem incorrect. So then I just do another line. There we go. And then we just start another line this way. And this is the other uh, sash of the window, across like that. Um, you can add a little bit of water to a few spots there, to the line, and then take a tissue and lift up. So you're interrupting a line or two there. Um, let's see. Cerulean blue. So here, a couple of vertical lines. Then I make those a little thinner. Here we have the idea of variety. So we're making these lines of these window grills with for, for, with variety color and tonal value so you see I'm using some um, cerulean blue to lighten it up here then I can go in and go straight straight into the sepia tone nothing else pretty much straight out of the tube paint and then you can just add that in, in a few spots. <clears throat> okay, now we'll work down in here, um, cerulean blue, just to have some cool colors here, and then some burnt umber, raw umber, yellow ochre, sepia tone, mix that all up. And then here we're going to go with even a little bit of a lighter tone, tonal value. And we're going to go up. I rinse off my brush, dry off a little bit of the paint and water, and try to lighten it up there a little bit like that.
this. Then I get some of that lighter tone. This will dry a little lighter. So how you see me putting it on now, know that it's going to be a little lighter in tonal value when it dries. Usually approximately half. So if you put something in watercolor on your paper, it'll lighten up about a half, halfway lighter than what you start out with when you put it onto the paper, when you're painting, approximately. Do a little finger painting here. Uh, we have some more shadowing here coming in the window. Uh, we have this here is And some darker darks up top here, you can see, above the uh, window. I'm always mixing and changing my colors around. I, uh, we used uh, raw umber, yellow ochre, raw umber, um, burnt umber sepia tone like that so let's mix around our colors variation is important and we're up above now the ceiling so we can kind of just kind of flow out there like that Remember the the um, window is the hard or the most you know this is the most detailed part of the painting the window. So once we finish up with this window, which will be the main portion of our work, we're really going to do a lot of intensive work here on this window area. Once that's done, then it's like easy. The rest of the painting's real simple. You're going to see that as we go. I'll show you exactly how we're going to. Um, Get this done, the window part, it's a little more difficult, but when you get this window uh, portion of this painting completed, the rest is going to be fun. We're going to be doing some swirling brush strokes for the walls, some tapping with some finger painting. We're going to do some tissues and blotting. So the walls will be a lot of fun, real easy to do. This is the most challenging and tough part of the painting, but once we get this area done, the rest of the painting will go easy and you'll just see how beautiful it's going to look when we're finished. So stick it out. Don't get uh, worried about how, if you have a problem with your window when you first start out, again, I always uh, say, if you can, sketch it out a few times on some paper, some printer paper uh, first. Get the feel for the window, how, how you're going to draw it, space everything correctly, draw it a few times first. Then when you get onto your good watercolor paper, your rough watercolor paper, then you'll already be way ahead of the game. Then you can draw it in there confidently. And then once again, we're here and we're painting now. You're painting this window. You're confidently getting in your darks first. You get your darks in first, and then you just sort of work your lights in as you're going. And then once this section here is done, the window section, 
The rest is real simple, and you're going to see how that works. And if you want to simplify things, simplify your window down. You don't have to do as much detail as we did here. You can leave out some of the um, details, like, you know, as much or as, you know, add in as much interest or as little detail as you want in this window section. But remember, the window is all the work, really. The rest is more fun, loose, free, you know, and you won't have to really work too hard once you get done with the window section. Okay, let's take a break. We're doing a lot of work here. This is very, uh, you know, detailed work, so it takes time. Take a rest, take a break. We'll come back and we'll continue working on our window here to get this wrapped up. And then we'll be on to the fun part with, with the walls and the, uh, the rest of the details here. Okay, we're back from a quick break here, and uh, let's get started again here. And again, we're working on the details of the uh, window here in our painting. It's an interior painting, so this is uh, something where we're thinking of, okay, we're on the interior of the room, looking out. So we're focusing on the this portion of the painting. And... Uh, Just uh, get some variation of color. And again, the fun part's really coming up soon where we're going to finish up with our window and then we're going to be breaking out into the wall areas where it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have interesting uh, uh, textures to do and it'll be less uh, challenging to uh, work on some of those details. And I think if we do lots of variety, we'll be okay. And here I'm just doing the molding on the side of the window. We can get some variety in that molding by maybe uh, rolling up a tissue a little bit. And then just lifting up a little bit of paint, like so. And we'll go underneath here. So we have our sepia tone, burnt umber, we'll do some burnt sienna, yellow ochre. Definitely want to get some cerulean blue in there. And we're going to get that line underneath, a little bit of a shadow line underneath the uh, molding, or uh, the uh, uh, windowsill. So this would be the darkest dark here, the shadow under the windowsill. Straight. straight out of the tube, sepia. Then we let that then we add a little more water. I add some water to my brush, dampen the brush and then and then we can just do a nice little bit of water in the brush, tap off a touch of the water. And 
And we go across like that. And let's get a little bit of the darker darks again. Burnt Umber, Sepia Tone, Burnt Sienna. Make sure we get in some cool Cerulean Blue. Cerulean Blue, I start to work around because I notice I haven't gotten as much Cerulean blue around the painting as I think I need. So I just put some in here and there. A couple splashes. Okay. Darker darks. Here on the trim, exterior trim on the wall. Zip on down there. There's, uh, it's starting to get shadowy over here. There's shadow, a lot of shadows over on this side of the window. So that's where when you have shadows and dark, you can have fun because uh, it's. You don't have to worry so much about the details. Okay, they're shadowing there. So I just blend that right in with the wall color. So now's the time when you start thinking about your sort of finishing up your window area. I mean, we have some work to do in the window area, but when you start to think of these uh, areas now, you're starting to think, all right, I'm sort of finishing up the window area. I'm getting there. So you start working some stuff out into the background. And we just do some scrubbing. You can do a little bit of that. No problem, because we're doing a lot of glazings on this wall. When we're done with the window, we're going to do a lot of glazing on the wall here. So you can add a little bit of fun splashes and things into the wall color, and it's not going to make a big difference. You're going to be going over a lot of this area with glazings, many glazings. As many as you want. You can actually t do more than I do. I'm, I'm just saying... What, what I'm going to do, you know, if you want to do more, you can do more. You can take your time and even do more glazings on the wall areas. But this is the key, really, is the window area. French ultramarine blue. If you add French ultramarine blue to your sepia tone, you get that real incredible dark, that the really super dark uh, dark, which you want to have here and there. This is a lot of glazings, if you can imagine. This is. Okay, now let's. We're going to get more dark darks here. You might put in some cerulean blue here, dark darks. We're going to do that raw umber.
there we go the bottom sash so we're going to do that bottom sash right there across like that then we take some of that straight French ultramarine blue and sepia tone and a couple little touches here and there along that good uh, we will do a little more of this here and I'm just kind of gently you know moving the brush around here and there to get that nice um, tree feel with the with the uh, pine tree here I'm gonna sw switch over to a um, to a needlepoint brush that needlepoint brush is going to give us those really beautiful accurate details of the pine tree that we need you can even uh, switch up to a smaller needlepoint brush. Let's see if I have my... Open up a brand new number eight needlepoint brush here. If you can see on this one here, uh, after a while, needlepoint brushes after many years they get a little bit uh, duller. So now I'm going to break out a brand new needlepoint brush here, and you can see how pointy that is. So that's what we really need. We need to have to have that. So if your brushes get worn out and the points get worn out after years and years of painting, you have to get some new brushes with some really really pointy tips on them eventually. Um, I'm not always happy that I have to buy brand new brushes, but you got you have to do it sometimes to get those real beautiful details. And that's what we're going to do here. So this is the we're doing the details of the um, pine tree outside of this window. And you can see here I'm picking up the dark darks and. Okay, that's good. I I would keep this very minimal. The um, the pine trees outside this window, keep them very minimal. Don't do too much in there. That can really cause a lot of problems. I already did a little too much, I think, up here as I'm looking back at the photograph of the painting, the original painting. So I'm not going to worry about it, but I'm just taking a mental note of it. And then we'll just do the... That's the house and the siding over there. Okay, that's the trim. There's some more. Again, more details here I got with the needlepoint brush. Looks good. And we'll just do that. 
And we're just doing the um, clapboard siding on the house on this side over here. Cerulean blue. A little bit of cerulean blue in the sky areas, but just a little bit. I would just leave it at that. Not too much. I would just leave it there. A little tiny bit of cerulean blue for the sky color outside, but I would leave it pretty much white paper. We're getting that feeling of super bright light into the room coming towards us and once we put all the dark glazings around here on the interior of this um, scene you're going to notice that this will really look incredible the light the bright light coming through the window will look really fantastic so let's uh, continue working on this let's take a quick break um, and we'll, we'll come back and we'll start working on this bottom portion of the window sill and then other than that i think we're pretty much good so as long as we can keep our focus and take breaks. We're, we're going to be fine. We did the majority of the window now is completed. We're going to do our window sill last. Then we're going to get into the fun part, the glazings around the window and inside the room. And we're really home free once we get this window area done anyway. So always remember that once you get this window area completed, the rest is pretty much fun and uh, really easy to tackle. So we'll come right back. And um, I just want to mention, if you haven't subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. We make videos just like this every week. So you come by, we're doing everything watercolor here on uh, my channel. You'll have a lot of fun. We're gonna do all kinds of interesting uh, uh, videos covering all kinds of techniques, methods, so that you get up to speed on all that you need to, so you can continue to create beautiful watercolors. Okay, so we're gonna be right back. Okay, we are back from a break. Uh, my break was about an hour, so everything dried here. So that's always a comfort as a watercolor artist. That's comfortable when you know you've walked away for a couple hours and you come back, you know, you don't have to worry about anything here when you start to go back in and paint. So we're going to continue here. We got the most uh, important part of the painting done, the window section. Now the rest is pretty much uh, going to be a little more simple, not too uh, difficult. So let's uh, let's do I think the bed post is going to be good to do now because if we kind of paint over it, um, we might lose a couple of the highlights on our bedpost here. So let's make sure our bedpost comes out good. That's also a good, important part of our painting here. It kind of gives us a, our indication more in a, in a bedroom here. And uh, so we'll, we'll start working on that. I want to go in and get my... Uh, sepia tone here we added our sepia tone raw umber a little bit of raw umber yellow ochre french ultramarine blue and uh let's see what we can do here let's let's finish up our window Okay, we're going to add that. So I'm just doing some detailed uh,
And then here, a super light wash. And then a couple little. Another darker wash here. There we go. And we'll get some blue, some darker uh, French ultramarine blue there. And then a couple little highlights here and there on the siding out here. And now I'm just darkening up a couple spots. Oh, splashing here and there. There we go. So we're just trying to keep things loose here. Variety. That looks pretty good. So we have plenty of variety in the window area. And we captured all the details we needed to. Um, there might be a few little dabs of darks that we could do up here, just in the... And that's pretty good. That's going to look fine. Okay, perfect. Now let's we're, let's work on the uh, bed post here. We're going to use uh, sepia tone and uh, sepia tone burnt umber. 
and French ultramarine blue, nice dark. And we'll start here. And I'm just carefully looking at the darkest darks. So the first thing I do is I'm, I'm going to tackle my darkest darks in this location here with the bedpost. And this looks pretty dark all the way through here, pretty much. Here, let's see. looks pretty good and if you have to lift up a little bit with some paint uh, some tissue you can do that too as well okay good and then we'll do some uh, Let's do a little bit of uh, shade here, some shading on the uh, bed. Bedspread here, there's a white bedspread I'm seeing, so I'm going to put some shapes here, some darks. Okay, that looks good. And then we have some of the darker darks over here. Um, sepia tone, burnt umber. This is uh, the uh, chair rail over here. Okay, and then we're going to go across, we're going to do our chair rail. And I'm just sliding my hand across the paper. And then I dampen my brush to go underneath that. Then I'm going 
to go with another little bit of cerulean blue, burnt umber, sepia. And again, another, just a quick, really light line there. Then I'm going to smooth both of those edges in. Then I'll go with one more line underneath this chair rail molding. That's going to be the shadow under the bottom of the chair rail molding. Changing up my colors. And then I'm going to uh, smooth that bottom line into the wall paint. Now here I want it to be blotchy, that's all. Okay, and now we can step up our brush size. I'll go with a number eight Raphael brush. And we'll just continue working our colors. Cerulean blue, raw umber, yellow ochre, sepia, cerulean blue. French ultramarine blue. Okay, now I'm going to look up here and see. Have fun with this at this point you're not stressing at all you're just getting the paint on the paper the washes you flow around with your brush do any kind of brush strokes you want to make it look interesting we're taking advantage of the uh, rough paper we're going to remember that this side of the wall is darker
the key here is uh, not to leave any white paper in these sections over here on the wall. So your wall uh, glazing, your, your, your watercolor finish on your walls here in this interior are going to be completely covered with watercolor paint with at least a mild light tone at best. You're, you're going to do darker tones over this that we're doing now. So we're doing our first glazing. And you can just really get on a, just a good wash on there, and that, that's fine. We're done with the bed sp spread. That's uh, completed now, so we don't have to worry anymore about that. That's good. Windows 100% good. And there we have it. Now we're just going to start getting a very light tone over here. Be careful of this line across here, though. We want to keep that nice crisp line there. But that's that wall is going to remain very light. So this is all we'll probably do over here on this side. And this will dry lighter. And if you go too dark, you can always lift up a little bit with a tissue. If you feel you've went a little too dark, you can tap up some lights. And there we have it. We will take a break in just a few seconds to relax a little bit. I'm just going to get a little darker tone across here on this chair molding. Chair rail. couple splashes. Give it some texture. All right, good. Let's let this dry. So now's a good time. We'll take a, a little break here. Nothing uh, too much because we really are pretty much coming around uh, to finishing up everything. So We don't have to worry about that. We're really just about completed here. So let's um, let this dry, this wash here, this glazing on the wall paint, on the interior of this painting, and then we'll come back in and just do our finishing touches. And we can do a little dabbing for some added interesting textures. Just a few here and there, though, not too many. Okay, we'll come back and do a darker tonal value under here. I'm just getting up some puddles of water. Okay, good. Okay, so we're going to actually do our last glazing now on our walls. Um, I think we just need one more glazing. We put uh, a good undercoat here, our first glazing on the walls. So I think if we go one more um, glazing over top of this, quite a bit darker. We're going to get that look we're looking for. So let's let's do that. Let's make sure we mix up some uh, some good dark wash here. So up here we'll go with our burnt umber. We're going to go with our sepia tone. A little bit of the blue, French ultramarine blue. Ross uh, burnt sienna. 
more sepia. Maybe a touch of also the blue, uh, cerulean blue. Let's try that. This looks dark. I, I definitely will say you're going to think this looks dark, but it's going to dry lighter. So I'm going dark. And then you can just take your brush and go different ways with it. That's going to make a better looking effect. Um, we're going to leave some of that light effect with the paper. It's a little bit lighter there. Let's go with some yellow ochre. So let's use some raw sienna too. We can get some raw sienna in there. definitely darker under here. Let's do that. Let's get some really good darks under the chair rail molding. This, you'll see, this is going, definitely going to get lighter. And then we can also use our tissue to blot up a little bit. Here and there. Maybe just do a quick little quick little uh, blots of the and again burnt umber, sepia tone, burnt sienna, a little bit of the blue, French ultramarine blue, raw sienna maybe too. Let's do that. And then go all different ways when you put the paint on. I tend to make it a little bit darker at the top of the painting. We want to keep this wall light over here. We don't want to go over that. Do some splashing while we're over here. Some cool, warm and cool everywhere. So I want to make sure I get some of that cerulean blue over here as well. And we'll do some. Just carefully make sure I get this line in the corner of the wall. Chair rail across the top of that. Make sure we get that okay. A little bit of that raw sienna to warm up the wall over here. Mm -hmm. 
And again, if you feel you went too dark, you can always blot up a little bit with the uh, tissue like that. Same here. A couple blots here and there. Give it more texture. And I think that's good. I see a little bit of a dark up here, so let's do that, like that. Around the window area, we can have a little more light, we can blot out some lights. Since we're using arches, you can go back in and do quite a bit of uh, secondary washes as you're working and you're not going to have an issue really. It, it tends to really work well. You can have lots of working time with arches. I added some cerulean blue under here, just a little bit, and then I can blot that up just to give it some coolness. And I noticed some uh, areas that we can sort of uh, blend in a little bit. Let's see if we could blend in a little bit of the, the window over here. Certain areas of the window sort of blend into the paint, to the wall. So let's do that, see if we can blend in some of that a little more. That could have been done a little better by myself here. Um, Couple splashes. Just want to make sure I get this. I'm just trying to get that that corner nice so that it looks good and crisp. Sometimes the paint uh, tends to bleed over just a little bit from the darker washes we did, so I'll make sure I get that good. Okay, I think that's actually looks fine. There's a little bit of uh, yellow ochre, raw sienna. Over here a little bit. Okay, so I think that's good. We'll peel off the tape and see how it looks with a good white border around it. See how that uh, crisps up the uh, edge here. And again, the key to the painting is really the window and uh, the rest went pretty smooth. As you can see, we just did glazings on the walls to give us that nice textured wall look. We use the rough paper. We have to have rough paper for this painting, that's for sure. Smooth paper 
might work. You could try it with the smooth paper as like another alter, you know, alternative to this to see how that might look. It might look good too as well. But uh, I think the effect looks great with the rough paper. Let's see if we can zoom in a little here. Okay, so we're gonna actually uh, we're gonna uh, finish up here. I'm gonna put this on the beginning of the video, so you, you can see the finished painting just like this here. This painting will be up on the beginning of the video. You can, at that point, uh, at the very beginning of the video, pause the video, take a picture, screen capture, whatever you have to do, and you can work right from this painting because it's a lot easier if you're gonna work uh, from this painting and then this way when you're getting into the painting and going step by step you'll be able to see all the colors I used and so forth and how we did all the process of uh, the different glazings and uh, getting in the window and all those details. So I uh, thank you for stopping by and for painting with me and uh, we'll see you on the next video.